Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord for another Tuesday evening. Such a blessing to be able to give God the glory and the honor for all his benefits he bestowed upon us as his children. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord again. The word says, oh, give thanks to the Lord for his good. His mercy endures forever. And that is a promise. That's a promise we have from our God. That his mercy endures forever. I don't know about you, but I'm excited about what God is doing in our lives. It's a privilege and an honor to magnify his great name. For truly the Lord is good. He keeps on doing great things for us. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Let us sign into this book again. Bear with me one moment, everyone. And we're going to get started in just a moment. Um, I believe we're going to have a good lesson tonight. Thank you, Jesus. I want to be praying for Alashonda and her mom. They are uh, and her auntie. They went out today on a trip, and um, and the vehicle broke down. So we're gonna keep praying for them on this evening. Can I open my book out tonight? Right there. All right, I want to read a devotion tonight <clears throat> as we get ready to start our class, start devotion, and then I'm going to uh, go into a word of prayer. So give me one second to get to the book um, here. From the book, More of You Got. Amen, amen. Our devotion tonight says, Today, I rejoice with triumph. Shouts for all of my enemies. It is through them, Lord Jesus, you have built up my character. I am better because of them. I wash my hands of revenge and surrender to you, Father. I know, Lord, vengeance is yours. I will love my enemies and pray for them. I want to be more like you, Jesus. I know I will never measure up to you, Lord. I will strive to be more like you, Father. Right now, Lord, I need your strength. I pray for more of you, God. That should be our desire every day. Is praying for more of God to be revealed in your heart, in your mind, in your spirit. 
that God would have his way in your life to lead, guide, and direct you in his truth and his righteousness every day of your life. Amen. Glory to God. Read this other one. Give me a second. Jesus calling. And it says, Come to me and rest. I am all around you to bless and restore. Breathe in me each breath. The way just ahead of you is very steep. Slow down and cling tightly to my hand. I am teaching you a difficult lesson. Learn only by hardship. Lift up empty hands of faith to receive my precious presence. Light, life, joy, and peace flow freely through this gift. Glory to God. When your focus turns away from me, you grasp for other things. You drop the glowing gift of my presence as you reach for lifeless ashes. Return to me. Regain my presence. Both of these devotions are very wonderful because they both put us in the mind to think about how our reliance and dependency is upon the Lord. It's not about you. It's not about me. That we would allow God to even deal with our enemies. Deal with, deal with the those who rise against you, to build your character in adversities and give you the strength and the power to stand on this word. You can overcome anything that comes your way when you trust in God's ability to keep you in his presence. This is the day that the Lord has made. We can rejoice and be glad at knowing that God is in control of our day. He's the orchestrator of our steps. He has the power. He has the ability to carry you, to keep you secure in his presence. Doesn't matter what you go through in this life, hold fast the confession of your faith without wavering. Because one who wavers, the word says, is tossed to and forth and driven by any wind of doctrine the enemy brings against you. So you got to keep standing on the word of God. Amen. Allow God's presence to have dominion and authority in you to keep you secure in his presence. Glory to God in the highest praise God. Amen. 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 Let's open a word of prayer. God bless you, Pastor Denise. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we come in for your awesome presence to say thank you, Lord God, for this day you have created. We thank you for the breath of life. We thank you for the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit working in our lives, oh God, every day to draw into your presence. We thank you, oh God, for the purging that we're going through in our own personal lives, oh God, to Take away the things that's not of you in our lives, in our hearts, our minds, our spirits, God, that we be perfected in your presence, God, even perfected praise, to praise you, Father God, in, in adversities, trials, and tests, and storms of life. I thank you for the victory in Christ Jesus today, O oh God, that you lead us in your triumph. Father, you defeated all of our foes, and you gave us the victory, God. We ask you to forgive us for our sins, knowing and unknowing sins, O oh God, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Thanks for giving us another chance to get things right with you, O oh God. Now, Father, I ask right now that you make my tongue a pen and ready writer. Father, my heart engrave the word of God to speak by the unto Holy Spirit, divine revelation from the heart of God. It will bring insight, understanding, and clarity to your people. Hear this word, Father, even from this day forward. Those who hear this word, Father, will bring transformation, mind, body, soul, will, spirit, and emotions, Father God. Everything about us would change for the better. And I thank you. Even, oh God, for traveling grace for the, uh, Denise, Ashonda, and Deborah, Father God. Father, your presence will keep, be their keeper, Father God. We thank you, Lord God. Even for the provision, get the van fixed, oh God. We know, Father, it's nothing too hard for you, but all things are possible, God. We even thank you, Lord God. Even for Courtney, Father, her situation with her vehicle with the tires, Father, that things are going to work out according to your will. Be glorified, God. We all have challenges in our lives, and we know that we put our trust in you, Father. We don't have to worry about those things. Because you told us in your word, Father, anxiety and heart of men will weigh you down. And a broken spirit dry up the bones. Father, we ask that the refreshing wind of your spirit fall upon each heart, Father, God, who's dealing with adversity, different situations and challenges right now, God. 
Give them the power to stand on your word and trust you and lean not to their own understanding, but in all their ways acknowledge you, Father God, that you would direct their path. And we thank you, we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Again, glory to God in the highest. I'm excited. This is a beautiful lesson we've been teaching about. Last week, I left off talking about Jezebel quenches the anointing. She quenches the anointing. And what she does, she uses the same spirit of the python to strip you of your power and your authority and to take control of your mind, and your heart, everything about you to begin to break you down where you have no power to fight. So we got to stand on the word of God. We got to continue to walk by faith and not by sight. The promise of God's word, allowing the spirit to lead us and guide us in the way of truth and righteousness as we continue to lift up the name of Jesus, holding fast and patient by faith without wavering and allow the spirit of God to really deal with our hearts in the way that he wants to change us from the inside out to make us better. So well, last week we were talking about a lady who had in, came into this one particular church where the, uh, where the pastor was at, the author of this book, and he was talking about how the Spirit began to influence the people, that God wasn't there in that place. He wasn't in the dance. He wasn't in the worship. He wasn't in, in the church at all. And so they began to rise up in controversy against the Spirit of God. And the pastor, on the leadership of the Holy Spirit, began to speak and began to confront this spirit and even invited the woman to join church and the woman had a spirit of witchcraft on her that prevented her from even giving into to the ministry but she did eventually join the church when you get this book you get this book you find it that she did join the church but after joining the church she began to incite rebellion in the house of God because she began to speak things that was not of God. And, and we have to really be careful when seducing spirits enter into your arena where you are in your ministry, in your home, in your marriage, in your relationships. The enemy will come in subtle ways to incite rebellion and, and seduce you with witchcraft spirits to control your thought life and your actions and and cause you to be vulnerable, be, to become a prey for his negative, foul spirit. And we have to really pay attention when the enemy comes in. We left off talking about after the, he said, after I confronted, I'm going to put this on the screen for you so you follow along with me. I'm going to go to also First Samuel chapter 28 in the scriptures. It says, after I confronted the woman for lying to my husband and others, she left the church. <clears throat> so what happened before this? The same person began to rise up and get people to believe that the money of the church was being misused and different things. And so as she began to spread this rumor and gossip among the people, people started agreeing with her and following her. And so the pastor had to really seek God to deal with this spirit. Because this is a, a very confrontational spirit that had entered into the church. And it was rising in people's hearts to get them to turn against their pastors. And many did. They turned from their pastor and started following after a lie. So the pastor discerned that she was operating in a spirit of confusion. And she had experienced a period of rejection. So because of this spirit of rejection, she was living a broken life. And you got a lot of people that will come into the church who are under the influence of Jezebel. And under this spirit, they're actually following seducing spirits to manipulate other people to follow them. So he realized this woman's under spirit of confusion. She experienced spirit of rejection. So he began to talk to her. But you go down a little further, it says, The anointing was upon me, and I spoke the truth. The Holy Spirit ministered to her, and she began to weep uncontrollably. After some intense ministry, she submitted to counseling and deliverance. Then he said, I wish I had a good report to share, but during the ensuing deliverance session, the woman refused to repent. See, this is a, a very important 
a, a point to pay attention to. Just because God gives you a prophetic word to prophesy to people concerning their behavior and the life that they're living doesn't mean they're going to repent. Because if their heart's not in a position to repent, they're not going to stop following after this demonic force. They're going to continue to try to spread like cancer in the body to get other people to turn away from following their leadership, even follow heresies and false doctrines. So he says she refused to repent and continued to make excuses for her behavior. And that's where you have to really, really pay attention in the spirit and ask God for discernment. When you find yourself confronting individuals out of order with God, and they begin to come up with all types of excuses to justify the error of their ways and their, their, their bad behavior. You need to pray and ask God, what is it? But God is showing you something in the midst. And we have to really pay attention. Because the enemy is, is definitely cunning and conniving. He's a manipulator, a deceiver, and he wants to trick God's people up to follow after his seducing spirit. She accepted no responsibility for her actions and continued <coughs> excuse me, to blame others. And that's when you find that a person is under a spirit, an unclean spirit, have into their heart. When they refuse to repent and want to pass the blame to everybody else. After her sessions, she phoned the church members to complain about the lack of anointing. Listen to this. She manipulated other members to feel sorry for her. She made her way onto our intercessory team and attempted to control the prayer meeting. That's a bold spirit. The demonic force and of Jezebel, that controlling, manipulating spirit, that, that python spirit, is a very stern, bold spirit who stands up against leadership and will incite a lot of people to follow in rebellion and contradict their leader and want to control things in the church, want to control the prayer meeting, want to control the Bible study, want to control how the pastor operates in the church. I've been in the church before where the pastor controlled by his wife. She dictated to him what he could and could not do in the church. And because he gave her that authority, he found himself when she corrected him getting to a sudden state of heart. Because now he allowed this woman in his life who's his wife to manipulate him to follow her leadership. We have to be careful how we allow the enemy to seduce us. D during intercession, she supposedly received direction from God as how the church finances were to be spent and who were really called as leaders. False prophecy. She claimed she heard from God, got direction from God, but she got her message and a revelation from witchcraft. The controlling, seducing, manipulating, smooth spirit of the enemy to tell her what to do to keep confusion in the house of God. She wants to control the finest, wants to Tell the people who, who's supposed to be in charge they're not qualified to be the pastor. This pastor been pastor for 10, 20 years. And, oh, he's not qualified. He needs to sit down now. Somebody else needs to take his place. That's how the, the spirit operates. It wants to tell you what you can and cannot do in your church. It wants to control the people to follow them and no longer follow their leader. But I thank God for this pastor. We're going to find out in the, in the story even further how God really used this pastor to rise against that spirit. And though she had not continued her deliverance sessions, 
listen to this. Starting out going to deliver sessions, classes. But the enemy manipulated her to make her think she don't need deliverance. So she got the living her own terms, her own condition. You got a lot of people in the church come to the altar for prayer under their conditions. They want you to pray the prayer they want you to pray. They don't want you to hear from God to pray for them. They want you to pray what they want you to pray for them. And that's it. Nothing more, nothing less. And once they get their prayer and control you on how to pray for them, then they're ready to go sit down. One thing I love about God, a person comes to the altar, if they're operating under any unclean spirit, any unclean spirit, the Holy Spirit will give us discernment. We begin to see beyond the sight of the flesh into the spirit. The reason the word Jesus told the disciples that the eye is of the body is a lamp. It looks it's a window to the soul. So you can look into a person's eyes and tell if they're lying or they're being deceptive. And we have to be careful how we allow the enemy to control our thought life and manipulate us. Amen. So here, here, here go a little further. She wrote letters about how God wanted to deliver sessions for others in the church. Now she wants to control delivery service. She wants to tell them how to run their ministry. What they need to do to reach other people. According to her standpoint. Or what her God spoke to her. You know what I said? Her God. Idol God. Not the true God, but demonic God has spoken to her. I am still in shock as, the, as I remember how many of our congregations this woman deceived. Listen to this. This, this is something to pay attention about. Because you're going to always find peepers coming to the church. What I mean by peepers, secret agents of the enemy that come into your church plotting and planning for your demise and looking for a vulnerable prey they can deceive and manipulate to follow them. This woman was under the influence of Jezebel, the demonic force, and she was plotting and planning for the pastor and his wife to be set down. You got folks doing it today in different churches. The agents of the enemy, they're looking for your demise. So they're plotting and planning for you to fall, for you to fail. So they're looking for anything that you do to have an accusation against you. That's why the words that don't let your good be evil spoken of. Because you let your good be evil spoken of, you give the enemy ground to come into your church, into your life, to wreak havoc and confusion in your life. So we got to be prayed up. She lied about me and other leaders and anyone who tried to speak truth to her. She even attempted to drive a wedge between Mickey and me, telling his wife. It's the pastor talking. One of Jezebel's seductions is to target the senior leaders and seduce that person into believing her lies. Ain't that something? Want to seduce you to control your thought life, to control what you see and what you hear, to get into your heart, to breathe poison inside of you, to go against your leader. So you got people who are weak-minded in the church, a Jezebel spirit come to another person, gets to that individual's heart, 
they spread the same poison to somebody else who's weak in the church. And before you know it, you have a group of people rising up against their pastor and wreaking confusion and havoc in the body of Christ with a purpose to kill, steal, and destroy that ministry. Amen? This is especially dangerous if the Jezebel spirit is a female and she targets a male leader who is married. You hear that? Very dangerous. If the female spirit targets a male leader, it's very dangerous because they're going to do everything they can in their power to seduce him and mislead him astray, even entice him. I've known women coming to the church, they're dressed provocative just on purpose to get the pastor's attention in order to entice him, knowing he's married and knowing his wife is in the church. But they look for an opportunity and a time where they can come in to entice him to fall into an adultery relationship. I've known pastors who gave into a seducing spirit and gave into adultery. And it cost them their marriage. It cost them their ministry. We all have done some type of adulterous thing against God in our lives at one point or another. Because we stopped trusting in God, stopped following after the lie. We stopped following idol worship. I mean, when I was married, I, I committed adultery when I was married. And I had a, a, excuses to justify. Which was no good excuse in the eyes of God. And God had to show me for himself that he called me as a minister of God. And that I had to learn how to walk in repentance and obedience and servanthood unto him. And to love my wife as Christ loved the church. And my marriage lasted a long time after that. Because I was able to have a repentful heart. That's the problem we have, though. Because we just talked about this a few minutes ago, how people are, are, don't want to repent. They're so stuck in their sinful ways and in their sinful hearts, they, they don't want to listen to the voice of God that's drawing them out. God says that he wished that none should perish, but that all should come to repentance. I think it's 1 Peter 5 and 8, if I'm not mistaken. But the problem comes in, we hear God talking, but we get stubborn. And we want to pacify our sinful ways. So we keep on doing the things we know that God don't want to do because we have been seduced by Jezebel. And we keep on following after the lies of the flesh that lead us down a path of destruction. And God is saying tonight, I'm calling you out of your dark places. Arise and shine for thy light has come and the glory of the Lord written upon thee. You know what happens when the glory comes? Sin has to fall off. When the glory comes and fills your heart, God says everything has to change in your life, starting with the mindset, the attitude, the way you speak to folk. Your character begins to change because now you're heeding the warning of the Holy Spirit and you're surrendering to his lordship and authority of Jesus Christ. That's what God's looking for, a heart surrender. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. So we got to get to a place in ourselves we really pay attention. When the Holy Spirit is pricking you in your heart, when you know it's something in your life you're doing that's not of God, don't deny it. Don't try to bury it. Don't try to cover it up. 
For God sees everything under the sun. He knows everything about you. The very number of your heads. He knows of your hair. He knows everything about you. He created you. He put his spirit in you. And he breathed life into you. And because he breathed life in you, he knows you. Because now you're connected to him. You know, it's really, really uh, something to think about. Even a sinner, God knows their hearts. He knows the ones who are connected to him, who's willing to turn their life around at a point in time in their life. But he says the wicked, he knows from afar. So he knows the ones who are wicked in heart, wicked in thought, wicked in action, who has no intentions of turning their life around to follow him. But the ones he know that are following him, he said, there he is. You belong to him. And he covers you. He protects you. He shields you. He guides you. He leads you. He directs you. Because my husband and I have a strong commitment to each other, there was no way that this Jezebel was allowed to bring division between us. Isn't that something? But they did not stop her from trying. One thing about the enemy, you're going to find out he's very persistent and become very persuasive. He knows what to draw your attention with, what to bait you with, what to lure you with, what to entice you with. He's going to keep on coming to you till he find a weakness in you to tempt you to fall from your first love, Jesus Christ, and stop loving God, the Father, and stop listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Go to 1 Samuel chapter 28. In chapter 18 of 1 Samuel, it's where God gave Saul a command to kill the Amalekites and destroy everything in that land. Instead of Saul being obedient, the father word of the prophet Samuel, that God had spoke to him. He kept the king alive, took the best of the spoils, kept the best of the cattle, all those things, and then blamed the people. That the people brought back the sheep. Because Sam, when Samuel came, he says, did not the Lord command you to kill the Malachites and everything in that land? And he said, he said, I did. You know, so you know how Saul is. He made an excuse. Yeah, I did. I, I killed everything. I did what God told me to do. But we brought back the sheep for a sacrifice to the Lord. God didn't tell him that because he's not a priest. He couldn't sacrifice to the Lord. So Samuel gave him another word from the Lord. He said, your rebellion is, is as witchcraft and stubbornness as, as idolatry. And because you did not hearken to the voice of the Lord to obey him, God is taking your kingship from you. So as Samuel turned to walk away, Saul grabs his garment and rips his garment. And Samuel turns to speak another word. Because you did not obey the voice of your Lord, our God, and you have torn my garment, God has torn the kingdom of Israel from you. So in other words, you're being dethroned from being king. So you go to chapter 25. Even during that time, Samuel prophesied that Saul and his sons are going to die. Because Saul had three sons. He told them they're going to die. So chapter 25, Samuel dies. And Saul and his children and, and the Israelites go into battle with the Philistines. And the very word God spoke, his sons got killed in battle. So Saul goes to consult a witch in chapter 28 because he wants God to change his mind. 
concerning the judgment that has been spoken over him. Because you got to remember that during that same time period, before you get to chapter 28, Dave was being groomed to be the next king. And they had an encounter with the Philistines and, and, and the giants, Goliath, and many others within that, in that army. And so when you get to this point, he wants to, God to change his mind concerning the judgment. So he goes to seek a witch. Let's go to verse 7. Verse Samuel chapter 28, verse 7. Then Saul said, said, then said Saul unto his servants, Seek me a woman that has familiar spirit. That means witch, a witch. That I may go to her and inquire of her. And his servant said to him, Behold, there's a woman that has a familiar spirit. At indoor. Ain't that something? He knew exactly where to go because he had people who know what his witch was. A familiar spirit. We talked about this in previous lessons. Familiar spirits are something you can identify that you know about. It's nothing strange to you. A familiar spirit is attached to generations and bloodlines. And that same spirit is still in operation in the church today if we don't denounce the power of that spirit. Verse 8, and Saul disguised himself. Now he's being deceptive. The same familiar spirit is now upon him and put on other raiments. And he went and two men with him. And they came by the woman My, my, my. By night, and said, I pray thee, divine unto me, by familiar spirits, bring me him up, whom I shall name unto thee. Witchcraft, deception, manipulation, control. So he disguised himself to this witch. Because he didn't want to be identified as the king of Israel. So he's concealing himself, his true identity. Too many people in the body of Christ today conceal their identity. They don't want their real person to be revealed. You got somebody that comes to church, got a foul mouth and just cuss more, better than a sailor. And soon as they get out of church, their real self comes out. In church, you act like you're really serving God, you worshiping and praising God, and you put on your holy attire to look holiest in the presence of the Lord. But your heart is still wicked and filthy. So as soon as you get out of church, the holy attire comes off, the facades come off, the real you comes alive. And began to reveal your true character. So he hides himself, right? Let's go a little further. And behold, and said, the woman said unto him, Behold, thou knowest what Saul has done, how he has cut off those who have familiar spirits and wizards out of the land. So she's fearful. She knows what the king's decree has been in the past. And she's making known to this man who she thinks is a stranger. But all the time, it's the king. How he made a decree to cut off those who have familiar spirits and wizards out of the land. Wherefore, then let thou a snare for my life to cause me to die? Now she's fearful because she said, I don't want to die because of what you try to have me to do. H have you ever been around people who would try to trick you to do things they know that are dangerous? That's going to be harmful to you. 
But they tell you nothing gonna ever happen to you. Nobody gonna never find out what you do and all that stuff. And they try to persuade you and entice you and being real cunning and crafty and malicious. But all the time they have a hidden agenda because they follow a seducing spirit. And you being vulnerable, knowing you ain't been seeking God's face, you give in to what they want you to do. And you end up getting in trouble. God wants us to pay attention. Because the Spirit comes through many different people in the church. Not those outside the church, but those in the church. But then it goes on. And Saul swore to her by the Lord. Saying, as the Lord liveth, there should no punishment happen to thee for this thing. See, now he's lying on the Lord. See, that's what the enemy would do. He called you to lie and say God said something God didn't say it. So he's lying, being deceptive, and being cunning and misleading. Verse 11, Then said the woman, Whom shall I bring up unto thee? And he said, bring me up Samuel. Oh my God, this, this is really good, y'all. It says, when the woman saw Samuel, she cried with a loud voice. And the woman spake to Saul, saying, what hast thou deceived me? I mean, why hast thou deceived me? For thou art Saul. See, now his true identity is being revealed. And the king said to her, Be not afraid, for what thou, for what sawest thou? And the woman said unto Saul, I saw gods ascending out of the earth. Oh my God. Isn't that something? Now this witch, who is controlled by demonic forces, been deceived by the king, saying now she saw gods ascending out of the earth. And said that what form is, 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 is he of? And she said, an old man cometh up, and he is coming with a mantle. And Saul perceived that it was Samuel. And he stooped with his face to the ground and bowed himself. Isn't this something? Being malicious, being deceptive, being cunning and crafty, the enemy brings up Samuel's spirit, a, a, a copycat. Because I do not believe God will allow the enemy to bring up the spirit of his prophet. Because God does not operate in witchcraft. He operates in truth and righteousness. So the spirit comes up, which looks like Samuel. And Saul recognized the spirit and bowed himself down to the face of the ground. And Samuel said to Saul, Why hast thou disquieted me? Why, in other words, why you disturb me from resting? To bring me up. And Saul answered, I am sore distressed. For the Philistines make war against me, and God is departed from me. You hear this? And he answers me no more, neither by prophets nor by dreams. Therefore have I called thee, that thou may, may, mayest make known unto me what I shall do. See, when Saul lost his position as king, when Samuel prophesied to him, the Spirit of God departed from him. Therefore, Saul realizes that God is no longer with him. So now when he's going into battle against any army, he don't have God's covering no more. So he went to seek this witch for an answer. But watch what happens. Then says Samuel, Wherefore then dost thou ask me, seeing the Lord is departed from thee? And has become thine enemy. 
And the Lord has done to him as he spake by me. For the Lord has rent the kingdom out of thy hand and given it to thy neighbor, even to David. Because thou obeyest not the voice of the Lord, nor executed his fierce wrath upon Amalek, therefore the Lord has done this thing unto thee this day. Moreover, the Lord will also deliver Israel to, with thee into the hands of the Philistines. And tomorrow thou shalt thou and thy sons be with me. Ain't that something? Even the Spirit still spoke the word of the Lord. Be it the Spirit of God or Spirit of enemy under God's control. We don't know. It never says if it was actually Samuel that came forth or not. Or was it an unclean spirit? But whatever the case is, the Spirit spoke the same word that Samuel spoke to Saul. But also brought another judgment. Tomorrow thou and thy son shall be with me. The Lord also shall deliver the host of Israel into the hand of the Philistine. He just made matters worse. Trying to manipulate God to get an answer. He done brought judgment not just on himself and his sons, but now on Israel. If you read the story of the Israelites, every time someone sinned in the camp, Everyone experienced judgment. I remember the sin of Achan. When Joshua was fighting against another against the Malachites, and they were losing the battle. And he sought the Lord, and the Lord told him, fight this battle, you're going to win. But then when they won the battle, Achan went into the camp of the enemy, and stole some treasures from the enemy and hid it in his tent. So when they went up against another army called Ai, a small army, something could have easily defeated about 300 men. That army stripped them and beat them of their power. And Joshua sought the Lord and said, Lord, why were we not able to defeat this little mini army? We're more well able to do so. All because of one individual took what God said, don't take, and hid among his stuff. And God said, Joshua, what I want you to do is on tomorrow, bring the leaders of the tribe of Israel, every family leader, before me, and I'm going to show you who has sinned in the camp. And when God began to show Joshua who it was that sinned in the camp. God took Ai, his wife, his children, everything he had, had it all burned up. All because of judgment fell upon him for his rebellion against God. What if God judged us the same way he did back then? You lose everything. Because of your rebellious heart. You hear the voice of God leading you to do what's right, but temptation is so great. So you do what you want to do to please yourself. So you find yourself a prey to the enemy's tactics, to his plan, to his destruction. And not only do you suffer, but your mate suffers. Your children suffer, your finances suffer, your health suffer, all because of one individual rebelled against God. So we have to really pay attention how we allow the enemy to entice us to sin against God. So, Let's go a little further. After I confronted the woman for lying to my husband and others, she left the church. If she had not left on her own, we were going to ask her to leave. We had desperately tried to help her receive healing and restoration. All you can do is continue to preach the gospel. Keep on encouraging people to repent when they're operating in a Jezebel spirit. 
bring them to the altar, try to deliver them according to the word of God. Well, if they refuse, even Paul told the church in Corinth that if you have a brother in the church who has sinned and committed adultery and you brought that person for the church, first you go to him with a brother, another brother, and try to encourage him to repent, but he doesn't do it, then you bring him for the church. He's, he's saying they still don't repent. Let them be put out. But pray for them that they so be saved, but no longer have any dealing with them. Because there is a way God has a divine order to deal with rebellion in the church when a person refuses to get right with God. Even shepherds. You have shepherds who are in adulterous relationships faithfully leading their church, faithfully teaching and preaching the gospel, but yet their heart is still stuck in an adult relationship. It's been going on for years. Don't think they're going to get away from God because they haven't got caught what they're doing among the church. Because one day God is going to reveal to them what they have been doing. Either in this life or when they go before the judgment seat of Christ. They will stand account for their sinful works. So we have to be careful how we allow the enemy to manipulate us and seduce us. So we definitely, desperately try to help to, her to receive healing and restoration. But because of her constant resistance and lack of repentance, we knew that she had to leave. Isn't that something? The more you try, the worse they become. The more resisting they have against leadership, against authority. Refuse to repent. Refuse to turn their life around. You have to let them go. Sometimes the hardest thing to do when someone in your life for years they, they at one point were your confidant, someone you relied on, you depended on, but they're out of order with God. You got to let them go. Familiar spirits will keep you in a soul tie. And they make it hard to let go of a soul tie. But when you recognize of the spirit of the enemy that's in that individual, God himself will reveal to you what that spirit is by the power of the Holy Spirit and will lead you in a separation. Sometimes God will cause a separation to take place to cut a soul tie. Just so you can have your heart and your mind, your soul, your will, your emotions right with God. Because you cannot serve God and be a hypocrite. You cannot Serve God and keep playing in the devil's playpen because it's going to lead you on a path of destruction. It took months to clean up the messes she had caused and dispose fully the lies she had concealed. Remember that Jezebel is linked to the cult spirit which keep things hidden. We talked about this before. The enemy loves secrets. He loves whisperers, talebearers, liars and deceivers. He loves them. If he can keep things festered in secret, he can wreak havoc in stealth mode to come and bring a death structure in your mindset and in your church. So you got to pray against the spirit of Jezebel. Only after much prayer and spiritual warfare, the hidden things revealed and the negative 
effect eradicated from our midst. Looking back, I realized that those times of confronting the Jezebel spirit were the most difficult season. Jezebel tried to quench the anointing God had put upon our ministry. It's a very hard, difficult task to expel the Jezebel spirit. It takes a corporate body of Christ to come together with one mind and one purpose to seek God's face and pray for God to intervene in the trap of the enemy to try to destroy the ministry. And once you realize that, the enemy has no power and no ground to stop the ministry from manifesting in the power of the Holy Spirit to clean the house. If his Holy Spirit had not revealed to us the work of this destructive spirit, it could have succeeded in its mission. Praise God that it didn't. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. 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 We're going to stop right here next week. We're going to pick up on Jezebel seeks an Ahab. Jezebel seeks an Ahab. Isn't that something? She's looking for a husband. So one she can control. So you need to be prayed up and pay attention that you don't fall prey to Jezebel's tactics. Allow yourself to be manipulated, deceived, and controlled by the enemy through the Jezebel spirit. And pray. If you find yourself even on your job, in your marriage, being attacked, by controlling spirit, seek the face of God. That God will reveal to you the underlying secret of the enemy of the attack. There's a root cause to everything that happens in your life. So I want you to pray with me this simple prayer tonight. Those you might be on here, might be a backslider. One once walked with God and he strayed away. Though you've never been born again, never said that Jesus Christ the Lord and Savior. The word says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish, but shall have, shall have everlasting life. You can receive this new life tonight by accepting Jesus Christ the Lord and believing that he can come into your heart to clean you up and perfect you, make you a new creature in Christ Jesus. Therefore, if any man be in Christ Jesus, a new creature, old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. You can receive this new life just by the confession of my believing heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. You can be born again. So pray this simple prayer with me. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you, Lord God, to forgive me for my sins, knowing and unknowing. Come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. And I thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, you just got born again. And the whole host of heaven is rejoicing over you, even those who repented, who were backsliders and turned their hearts back over to the Lord. The angels of heaven are rejoicing over you because you made that choice to come back home to your father. Like the prodigal son who took his inheritance, left home and squandered everything he has, ended up in a pig pen, and decided to come back home. And the father was waiting with arms wide open to receive him. God just did that for you tonight. His arms were extended, waiting for the opportunity for you to come to your senses and make a decision, a decisive decision to come back home. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. I pray this has blessed you tonight. If this has been a blessing to you, I want to so into the ministry, the links on the bottom of the comment section, the avenues you can sow into the ministry. Every seed goes back into the church. We have a project we're doing to rebuild our church, expand our church, and we're trusting God to give us the resources to do this in the proper time and according to his will and his plan. Amen, amen. So you all continue to stay encouraged, stay your word. Read the book of Samuel. Sam the book of Samuel is very interesting. 
has a lot of wisdom and knowledge in it. And you find a lot of encounters where God had to deal with rebellious hearts of people and how he loved his people so much to even deliver them, even in their state of rebellion. Which reminds of us today, God still loves you. He still cares about you. And he's still for you to deliver, heal, and set you free from the inside out. So, Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you, Lord, for this lesson tonight. I pray to have my Father deaf ears. I pray you bless every person that, Father, hear this message tonight from this day forward. Those who are on tonight, Father, bless every individual. Cover them in the blood of the Lamb. Keep them safe in your will, your plan, your purpose, O oh God, from the attacks of the enemy that come against them. Cover their minds and their hearts and their spirits, God, their finances, their homes, their health, O oh God. Let your will be done in their lives. Give them discernment to pay attention to this enemy spirit that comes to kill, steal, and destroy in their lives. And I thank you, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Amen, amen. The Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord turn his face upon you. May the Lord lift his counsel upon you. And may the Lord give you peace. Until next week, Lord, God bless you all. Thank you all for coming. Hey, Bernie, God bless you. Cousin Jabbar, bless you. Cornell, amen. God bless you all for coming on tonight. I pray this has blessed you. But y'all stay encouraged. Stay encouraged. God loves you. God loves you. And so do I. And you'll have a great night. Make it a great night on purpose for purpose. Amen. All right. Have a good night.